What's up everybody, Dave here. Let's talk about the five upgrades you should do to your mountain bike, in what order and why, let's dive in. Number one, the first thing you should upgrade on your mountain bike is going to be the wheels. The wheels are the top thing to upgrade on your mountain bike for a couple different reasons. Number one is because they're the thing that actually rotates on the bike. So we take a look at why this is, it's because of physics. Number one is the wheels are a component of the bike and we wanna get the lightest, strongest, most dependable wheels you can get for the money. Personally, I like riding a range of bike wheels. I like my Industry 9 wheels a whole lot. I really like FR560s here on my Common Salt Furious. And uh, I've actually really enjoyed um, some E13 wheels as well, laced up to DT Swiss wheels. Like the thing is, what we wanna do is we wanna get the lightest and strongest wheel possible for the money. So the reason why this is so important is because when you lower the unsprung mass on a bike that's also rotational, oh you get a boost to acceleration. In other words, there's less holding you back when you wanna speed the wheels up. And it also means that you can change direction more quickly with the same size of wheel. That's the number one thing that you wanna do. Upgrading the wheels allows you to actually choose heavier, more durable tires. It gives you flexibility in a lot of different ways. The reason why this is number one is because, again, it gives you the most bang for the buck, even if you spend a lot of money on the wheel. Plus, you can get some really, really good wheels made if you get a good, reliable hub set, such as the DT Swiss wheels that are out there, or Chris King. And if you wanna go very good reliability, very easy to maintain, go with some DT Swiss. If you want lifelong reliability and very easy to maintain, get some Chris Kings, a little bit more bling. And if you, like me, I really prefer riding on Industry 9 wheels because the company is right up the road. I've met them in person, I really like them. Whoever you like is good though. And let's move on to number two. Number two is the second most important thing that you need to upgrade on your bike as soon as possible is tires. The reason why it's number two is because if your wheels are extremely heavy and weak and then you put a really good tire on that rim, then it'll just feel very sluggish and you may only get a boost to traction and you may not be able to enjoy the benefits of the extra durability of a more expensive better tire and it also might be so heavy and cumbersome that you lose a ton of agility with the tire. Okay, so what you wanna do is you wanna find a tire that's suited to the type of riding that you do. Back in the day when I started riding a whopping 19, 20 years ago, we were still coming out of the tube age and into the tubeless age. Nowadays, almost every single rim that's out there and tires that's out there is available in a tubeless type. Anyone who tells you that tubeless is hard to set up, they don't know what they're talking about, get an air compressor, and I'll actually show you in another video how to install a tubeless tire as easy as possible. There's a couple little hacks. So once you get this tire, I would go for a tubeless tire. You can do a rim insert if you'd like, but the most important thing is get a strong tire that's designed for the type of riding you will do. If you're on long backcountry epics where you can't afford a flat, make sure you get a downhill or enduro casing tire. If you're riding local trails that don't have a lot of rocks and roots, go for the lightest casing tire that you can possibly get with the best rolling resistance and the best grip. Now, once you've got your tires picked out and your wheels picked out, you're going to have a pretty nimble bike that's responsive, grips well, and accelerates quickly. And you may only have to spend a couple, three, four, five, six hundred dollars in order to get a really good set of light, strong wheels and tires. Number three is going to be upgrading your brakes. The reason why I recommend upgrading your brakes third is because this is something where you can actually spend a lot of money to get only a marginal gain, but it's something that you are going to need to have a lot of power and control with, especially if you're getting better at riding and you're breaking through the intermediate plateau and you're reaching new skill levels. The better and more responsive brakes that you can get, the better off that you are. Now there's two ways that I look at recommending brake upgrades for folks. Number one is to optimize the actual brake pad and brake rotor size. So what you can do is you can add braking power to your bike simply by installing a larger rotor from the same brand, just go Google it, find a 203 if you're stuck with a 180, see how you like it. It's about a 40 to $60 upgrade in many cases. And plus you get to keep the old one if you don't like it. Another thing that's really cool to do is to upgrade the brake pads themselves. Honestly, the best type of pad that you wanna look at is one that's probably going to be uh, metallic or organic. 
There also are ceramic pads, but for some reason, I have not been able to find a ceramic pad for sale, and so it's really hard for me to test something that I haven't found. If you know where to find some ceramic pads, I've heard they're the best. I think they're the most expensive, but you can't go wrong choosing between organic or metal or a combination of the two. So what I'm gonna do is include either a link below or description below to talk about the benefits of which one you wanna do. Some perform better in cold, some perform better in wet, and you just pick which one is better for the type of riding you do. And hey, it's not even that expensive, so it's a great cost to benefit ratio upgrade. Upgrade number four is going to be bars. The reason why upgrade number four should be upgrading your bars is because it changes, one, the geometry of how you relate to the bike. Now, for those of you who are really tall like me, you probably are going to find yourself riding and feeling comfortable with 780 or 800 millimeter bars. My wingspan is six foot seven. And I've actually found that I'm most comfortable on a downhill bike with 780 millimeter bars if I want maximum stability. If I go any wider, I run into trouble. Now, any other bike aside from a downhill bike, I'm going to choose a 760 millimeter bar. That's very short. I really like narrow bars because I like nimble bikes. They're very twitchy. Now here's the thing, what you wanna do is experiment with upsweep and backsweep. Part of the reason why is because this can actually reduce shoulder pain and it can actually match you and your physical geometry to the way you need to stand on the bike. One thing that's a little bit of a cheat code is that if you have more upsweep and more backsweep, what tends to happen is you'll feel more comfort if your arms are shaped like this. Now, 90, 99% of men can't touch their elbows together when they put their elbows together in front like this. It's called a valgus deformity. Uh, you're extremely unlikely going to have this if you are a man. Uh, some women, when they put their hands together, it looks like this. And if you look at riders like Darren Bearcloth, it looks like their arms are shaped like this. So what you wanna do is that if you, if you put your elbows together and your elbows, or if you put your arms out straight and your elbows are really far away from each other, Practice with a flatter bar that has less upsweep and less backsweep. You'll probably feel more comfortable on a bar that has less upsweep and less backsweep. And if you're like me and your elbows are really close together or you're female, what you're gonna look at is probably a bar with more upsweep, more backsweep for more comfort. My favorite brand right now, and I don't get paid to say any of this, I really like Deity Bars. Now the fifth, it's maybe not my first choice, but it is a really important upgrade, is going to be pedals. I went and got some Chromag Scarab pedals and it changed my life. The concavity of the pedal is perfect. The type of riding that I do is very much, I like to jib, I like to move the bike up and down and flow a lot. And I like to do aggressive riding and I like to ride on flats. And so having a really good pedal that I feel comfortable on is super important. Having pedals that you feet feel con your feet feel connected to is really important. And I, I mean, I think these are really expensive, really good pedals. It's an awesome upgrade to get a good set of pedals. So if you are someone who likes to jib around on the trails, move around on the bike a lot and pick the wheels up, you want pedals with concavity. In other words, they have a little bit of this shape to them. Now, number six, I'm gonna include a bonus upgrade that I think you should consider. And this one I really only think you should consider if you just have money to burn. And the reason I'm saying this is strictly from experience. I have purchased about 25 mountain bikes used and two mountain bikes I've bought new. And so I've had precisely two new drivetrains in my life. I've replaced new and my used bike drivetrains equally as often, and I've had the same amount of problems with new and used ones, and I've had about the same amount of problems with very basic XT drivetrains as I have with, say, uh, Saint. I even have a $500 SB1 single-speed adjustable uh, tensioner for my, my Trek Ticket S, and that thing was awesome. I've had zero problems with almost every single product I've ever bought. So the thing about a really nice drivetrain is that if you are a ex roady cross-country rider, you'll probably get some better power transfer out of a nicer, newer drivetrain. And frankly, they feel really nice. I have ridden some very nice electronic drivetrains before. If I just wanted to go out and spend a grand or two and burn through it, I'd probably put it into the drivetrain. It just feels nice. The reason I don't recommend it as something that you should upgrade on your bike on the top five is because the price to benefit ratio just isn't there for me. 
Part of the reason why too is that if you ride really gnarly trails and you break your stuff, it's a whole lot less painful to replace a $50 derailleur or a $90 derailleur than it is a $700 one. All right, now listening to these tips, if you can think of a rider who's considering upgrading their bike right now and maybe doesn't want to do with it, share this video with them, subscribe to the channel, take a look at what we've got. We've got more coming for you. That's all for today. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.